Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Last night I came across a very disturbing story out of Minneapolis. Black Lives Matter activists and members of the NAACP have been protesting against police brutality there. A brother by the name of Jamar Clark, who was 24 years old, was gunned down by the police there. He was unarmed and he was shot down like a dog in the streets. Apparently the police accused him of interfering with paramedics arriving at the scene. They also claimed that he was reaching for a gun from one of the police officers. We hear this all the time. Anytime an unarmed black man is shot by these police. They want to say that he was reaching for the weapon. They said this about Michael Brown, and apparently they were going to try to say uh, the same thing, if I'm not mistaken, about Walter Scott. But the video evidence proved that Walter Scott was completely unarmed, that he was running away from the cops when he was shot by the police. But they claim that he had a he reached for this officer's gun. They claim that that's what he did, and that that was a justification for his killing, for him to be shot by these police. But there are witnesses who claim that the brother Jamar Clark had his hands in handcuffs at the time, that he was cuffed when he was shot by these police. So there are conflicting stories here. And the people are demanding that the police release the surveillance tape. And so far they have not released the tape. So the people have been protesting for days upon days. They have been encamped outside of the police precinct demanding justice for Jamar Clark. They have stayed there demonstrating their outrage because the videotape would prove the case one way or the other. And the police have not released that tape. The police claim that the tape is incomplete, that it doesn't show the entire event. But the people have every right to see this tape. So the people are protesting and they are demanding justice. And apparently, some white supremacists don't like what they see. They don't like to see black people protesting. They don't like to see black people standing up and demanding justice. So what do these white supremacists do? They come to Minneapolis bearing arms, making threats on video. And I will post a link to an article that features video footage of these white supremacists making threats and posing with a gun. And I've noticed that these white supremacists, they use this term for black people. Uh, it's the term didn't do. And basically they're saying didn't do nothing. They're saying, well, anytime something happens with black people, we say we didn't do nothing. So you had these racist devils threatening black people with guns. Not only do they threaten black people on videotape, they actually carry out their threat against black people. And they go to this protest. And apparently members of Black Lives Matter tried to get these white supremacists to move away from the site of the protest. And as they are trying to get these racist bastards to move away from the protests, the racists open fire on Black Lives Matter protesters, shooting five of them. And it's only for the grace of God that those five Black Lives Matter people were not killed. Two were shot in the leg, one was shot in the arm, a fourth was shot in the stomach, and I'm not sure where the other one was shot. 
but they could have been killed. And from what I understand, the shooters have not been apprehended. They are still free um, and they're still on the run. As I pointed out in my recent blog article, this is yet another reminder of the situation that we face as a people. It's another reminder that we are at war. That war began the day that we were brought to this country. We were brought here not to participate in America's so-called democracy. We were not brought here to be citizens. We were brought here to be slaves. We were brought here as property. We were brutalized, raped, beaten, killed. And after they were done enslaving us, they subjected us to Jim Crow. And even today, with a black president in the White House, with all the appearances of some semblance of equality, we continue to be targeted for death and destruction. We continue to be targeted by these police and by white supremacists. See, we don't face an imminent threat from ISIS or from these terrorist groups. They are not our immediate and biggest threat right now. The biggest threat facing black people is from these police officers and from white supremacist groups. I did a, a video um, not too long ago about a plot in Virginia where you had these white supremacists plotting to start a race war. And I will include a link to that video as well so that you can check that out if you haven't seen it. But these people aren't playing any games. They are declaring war on black people. That shooting in Charleston a few months ago is another reminder that, again, we are at war. Here you have black people praying in a sanctuary, somewhere where they're supposed to be safe. And in comes a wolf preying upon the congregation like they were sheep. Killing the congregation, you know, killing nine innocent black people. killing nine innocent black people, shooting them down dead as if their lives mean absolutely nothing. And instead of fighting these racist bastards, instead of condemning this damn killer, these slaves want to forgive this killer. They want to pray for that damn killer. They want to turn the other cheek. And they think somehow that that's some kind of godlike trait. There's nothing godlike about being a damn coward. There's nothing godlike about being a damn punk. It's time for us to stand the hell up and realize what's going on. So you had these people shoot protesters who were demanding justice. I reported in a couple of other videos about the threats against black college students. Here you have young people trying to get an education, trying to advance in life. And even there on the college campus, they have to face threats from these racist bastards. And recently, a black man was beaten or attacked by some racists. I think it was in Portland, Oregon, and I'll include a link to that story as well. I mean, how many warning signs must we have before we realize what's going on? Before we finally wake up and realize that we are at war? We are at war. Marches are great, vigils are great, you know, speeches are great, 
But ultimately, we need to prepare to defend ourselves. We need to defend ourselves. We need soldiers. We need arms to protect ourselves. We need to exercise our legal right to bear arms. We need to defend ourselves. Why are we the only ones that think that it's some kind of radical notion to defend oneself? When every single nation on the earth defends itself. When every single intelligent people defend themselves. When you had these racist white people marching in front of mosques, bearing arms. Nobody calls them crazy or no one calls them militant. They call those people patriots. They call those damn bigots good American citizens. They recognize them and they they salute those people. You had a black protester at a Donald Trump rally, you know, demonstrating. And he was attacked for demonstrating. He was attacked by Donald Trump's white supporters and even some of his Negro stooges. But yet we want to have like a posture of being a damn punk. A love your enemy type mentality. Well, I don't love my enemy. I despise my enemy. I love my people too much to love a damn enemy that shoots my people. To love an enemy that threatens my people. It's just time for us to wake up. It has been time for us to wake up. Every other day, these police kill a new black person. It's a new nigga every day. Today is Jamar Clark. Tomorrow to be somebody else. Every other day, there's a new hashtag on Twitter for somebody that's been killed by these police. And all we do is repeat the same cycle. People march, people pray, you know, they hold vigils and such. And the process repeats itself. When our people are killed by these police, the police aren't the ones who usually go to trial. Usually they get off. They don't even go to trial. They don't even face charges. They get away with killing black people. And when they do go to court, often they are exonerated. Often they get away with it. And instead of the police officer being the one on trial, the victims are the ones put on trial. The victims are the ones who are demonized. And the brutality gets justified and explained and rationalized away. And often they trot out these Negro puppets to justify the brutality against black people, to deflect away from the real subject matter. And to have you talking about some black on black violence nonsense. It's just time for us to stand up. It's time for us to stand up to these police. And it's time for us to stand up to these white supremacists. We shouldn't be afraid to walk around on campus. We shouldn't be afraid to demonstrate. We shouldn't be afraid of these police when we're driving down the street or walking down the street. The time for running, the time for being a punk, the time for being a damn coward is over. It's time for us to stand up as a people. 